Can we give Kamari another hand? I said, Kamari, I need you to lead a song. And he was like, I said, Kamari, D. Simple, you're going to lead a song. Didn't he do a wonderful job?
said, hallelujah, keep my mind, hands, and feet. They said, oh, Lord, keep all of me. Some of us adults, some of us adults need to ask the Lord to keep all of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am so proud of them, and thank you, Sister Crusher, for the way that you work with them, and thank you. <laughs> thank you, Tiziana, the way that you all are working with these babies. And you may not be little bitty babies, but to me, you're all my babies. Amen. You know, first I want to give honor to the Lord God Almighty, who is the head of all of our lives. I give honor to our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Michael A. Smith, our first lady, Patricia Smith. And I give honor to all of you, each and every one of you, and those that are watching us live stream, and those that will see this at a later date. You know, I am full because when you think of this season, this Advent season and what it means, it's not about shopping and gifts as it was said in one of the skits that we had this morning. It's about Christ and what he did for us. When you think about the Advent season and when you think about the candles that are lit during this time in some denominations, it stands for peace, they stand for joy, they stand for love. And that's where we need to have our focus. I ask that you all stand with me as we sing holy, 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 as we get into the space with the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. It's just something about the name of Jesus. And it's something about this time of year. You know, the Holy Spirit was already here when we got here. And I don't know about you, but see, I brought him in with me. And anywhere I go, Hallelujah, the Holy Spirit goes with me. So, thank you. And now we will have our responsive reading. And it is Psalm 100. It is up on our monitors. I will read the first verse, and you all will read the next. And then at the very end, we will all read together. Amen. And it says, a psalm of praise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. All 
together. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth for all generations. Amen. You may be seated. And now we will have our welcome and the announcements. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Will all our visitors please stand? Amen. Good morning to you. I am Lady Patricia Smith, and on behalf of Senior Pastor Reverend Dr. Michael A. Smith, the Antioch East Church family, and the Courtesy Guild, we all would like to say welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad that you are here worshiping with us this morning. As well as to our live streamers, we say welcome to you. Later in the service, the pastor will extend an offering, I'm sorry, an invitation for you to join our services and to join us here at Antioch East to become a part of our family. We would be so blessed if you are led by the Lord to join us here at Antioch East Baptist Church. The announcements are as follows. Immediately after worship service today, there is a call meeting, so please remain in the sanctuary, all members, for a brief call meeting. Also, the Angel Tree Luncheon is for all the church members who are bereaved within these last 12 months for all the families. God loves you, and so do we. Remember, weeping may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning. Also, after the brief call meeting, there is an usher meeting for ministry, usher ministry number four. All participants and parents are to meet in the conference room next to the administrative office. Watch day service 2023. On December 31st, immediately after our 10.45 a.m. service, we are invited, you are invited, to join us in the dining hall as for food and fellowship. Afterwards, we will reconvene back into the sanctuary for testimonies and praise. This is an invitation that's also extended to those who desire to join us on the prayer line as well on December 31st. Call in at 11.50 p.m. as Senior Pastor Smith will be on the prayer line as we pray in the new year. Remember, Jesus is the reason for this season. To God be the glory. Good morning to our Antioch East Baptist Church family. We're so grateful to stand before you we have today is the right hand of fellowship, and we're doing it early before we do the invitation of discipleship. Deacon Carol Mapp, along with Deacon DeVars Braid and Dr. Denise Mapp, are our facilitators for our new members. And yesterday, we were so honored to have some of our members join us who will be giving the right hand of fellowship today. Amen? At this time, I'm going to ask for Deacon Mapp to come forward. I know that Dr. Mapp is helping right now with the Angel Tree Festivity. She's here. Dr. Mapp is here. Deacon Javaris Bird is here. And we're going to ask those three to come down as we go ahead and give the right hand of fellowship for those individuals that have completed the new members class. And we will be calling their names accordingly. At this time, when we call your names, we ask that you come down, and once I give you your certificate and the Bible that we give to you to cherish on this day. 
I'm going to read one of the certificates, and they all read the same. Certificate of completion. This certificate certifies that the individual whose name will be called have a manifested credible evidence of being converted into a covenant with Antioch East Baptist Church and completed the course of instruction for the Christian education, new members orientation. You are hereby awarded a certificate of completion to further enhance the joys of the Christian life and church membership. As a new member, you are hereby awarded this certificate by Antioch East Baptist Church, Ellenwood, Georgia, 30294, on the 17th day of December, 2023, by the senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Michael A. Smith, uh, chairman of the deacon ministry, and also the new members coordinator, Deacon Carol Mapp. The first individual was Brother Kobe Maloney. Brother Kobe. Our next individual is Sister Ivory Haley Howard. Sister Ivory. We have Brother Dane Glasso. We're asking him to come down. Brother Dane. The last individual for this day, but not the least, Sister Janice Clemens. I want y'all to take a look at Sister Janice. She jumped up. She's coming down like our young people. She is young. She's seizing the moment. One of our new members. To God be the glory. shaking hands at this time, but we are showing a symbol of love. And for those that can make a heart, we ask you to just show them a heart as any of y'all keeps back the church, letting them know that they are part of us and they're welcome and we love them. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to ask you to stand there for a moment. We're going to ask our new members and leaders to please stand next to them. And I'm going to stand on the other side. Lady Patricia, I'm going to ask you to come up with me.
Father God, Father God, Father God. Father God, Father God, Father God. We say good morning, Father. We say good morning, Jesus. We say good morning, Holy Spirit. And Father God, we want to thank you for your angelic host that you have encamped around and about each and every one of us that's keeping us safe, Father God, from all hurt, harm, and danger, both seen and unseen. And Father God, I have to stop at this moment and ask for forgiveness, Lord, for anything, anything, Father God, around and about me that's not like you. Father God, my thoughts, my actions, Father God, things known or unknown around and about me, I ask for forgiveness. And you see, I can take solace in that because your word tells us in First John that if we ask in earnest that you're faithful and just and you will forgive. So Father God, I say thank you for that. Father God, at this time, I want to lift up all of those dealing with bereavement. Father God, all of those that are dealing with being sick and shut in. Father God, all of those that have gotten a bad report from the doctors. And Father God, all of those that are waiting on a report from the doctors. But see, Father, we know that you're a doctor that never lost a case. We know you can do all things but fail. And Father God, because you can. And it's your choice. We know that you will because your word tells us that you will do according to your will. So, Father God, we say thank you for that. Father God, I want to lift up our singing pastor, the Reverend Dr. Michael A. Smith, as he gets ready to bring the word to us. A word from you, Lord. A word from you. And Father God, we pray that every heart can receive the message and we be able to apply it to our lives. Father God, I lift up all of the bloodlines, all of the bloodlines, Father God, under the sound of my voice. Father God, all of us that are yours, and Father God, even those that have yet to come into the knowledge of knowing you, because when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he prayed to you, Father God, he said he would lose not one that you have given him. Not one. And because of that, Father God, I know that all of us that are yours, if we haven't, if we haven't already said, I yield, that before we leave this side of your green earth, that we're going to cry out and we're going to say, I yield. And we're going to ask that you be our personal Lord and Savior. So, Father God, we say thank you. Father God, I just say thank you for allowing us to be here at this time of year. And, Father God, for what you did over 2,000 years ago. That you sent your only begotten Son so that we would have a right to the tree of life that we can accept him as our personal Lord and Savior, which gives us the right to boldly come to your throne, to boldly come to your throne. And then, Father God, your word tells us also that where two or three are gathered in your name, that you are here in the midst. So we thank you for allowing us into your presence. Father God, we love you. We thank you. And Father God, we will forever, Lord, give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' matchless and mighty name, as we say amen, amen, and amen. And at this time...
Let's go make the ushers come down, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for another day. Thank you for giving us, giving us traveling grace to and from. Thank you for those who are able to offer and those who have the heart but just can't, Lord. Thank you for giving us the grace to make it to this day, Lord. Thank you for everything you've done and everything that you're going to do, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. How many of you all need God to do something for you? Amen. <laughs> oh, how many of you want waiting on him to do something for you? How many of you need him to do something for you? You know, whenever I'm waiting on God to do something for me, that's when I go to worship. <laughs> I just think about what he's already done for me. And I know he's the same God that did it then, and he'll do it now. You know, demons tremble at the sound of Jesus. When, we, when you're in distress and you need something, all you got to do is call on the name of Jesus. The Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So at some point, everybody's going to have to call on the name of Jesus. So I think we need to start calling on them now. Amen? Amen. When we speak in your name, <laughs> something happens in the room. Our hands go What you're gonna do when we speak your name? Power is released when we bow down before you. Every demon has to flee before. 
Yeah. 
and he brought us through. I don't know about you, but he brought me through some stuff this year. And I'm not going to complain about it because he brought me through. And I know that I would never have been able to make it without the Lord, without Jesus. And every time I get in a situation, I say, Jesus, Jesus, because I know I needed him to do it for me. I can't do it by myself. <laughs> myself. So let's call on the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy that you show every day. Lord, we're going to call on your name. We're going to call on your name. We're going to continue to bless your name. Praise your name. We won't let rocks cry out for us, Lord God. We're going to give you praise. We're going to give you honor. We're going to give you glory. So before we do anything else, we call on you. Before we do anything else, we call on you. We call on Jesus. Yes. Show up. Something happens in the room, and our hands go up. Ah. Even when every knee is bowed, every demon has to be released. Hmm. When I requested that song, I that song is something I play often with Anthony Brown in my car, but we have our beloved sister Jackie Crutcher when she came on the prayer line singing that song that yeah. just resonates in my heart and soul and mind and spirit. I'm going to ask all of our young people, the babies, uh, whatever they want to call them, but I say our young people, our future. We are going to ask that we have any of them to come down and take the front row. Any of our young people from the choir, and if you're visiting with us and you trust us with your babies, I promise you, we will take good care of them. We want to let you know we have the front rows for them, so if any of our youth is still in the room right now, we want to invite you down, because it's Youth Sunday. You don't have to be a member to come down. If you want to come down, you can, and we just want to invite you to the front row, and we're just so grateful. 
Our young people, our teenagers as well, they know that they're invited. I, I'm so excited I see my college students home, and I'm just so ecstatic. We want to say Sister Nikki Woods is here. She graduated from Valdosta State University. We thank God for you, Nikki. God bless you. Taylor, we see you. We saw you last night with fam, you too. We give all praises to God. We thank God. Any young people that want to come down, any of our teenagers, our deacons will make room for you. Don't get worried. They'll make room for you. You're welcome to come down. Because we want you to know when you come to our church, everybody's welcome. When you come to God's house, you're welcome. That's all right. We'll make room. It's a beautiful thing. See, Tyson saw the row was filled, but he didn't stop coming. He came on down. I'll take the next row. So we got to start somewhere. We thank God for you, Tyson. Look at my beautiful youth, and we see some of our visiting youth with us today. We give God the praises. Isn't it good to be able to give God praises? Isn't it good to say that? We're amongst the living and not amongst the dead. I, I didn't know what that meant when I was a young child. So hear my mom, them always say that. But the older I become, I realize it's good to just have breath in your body. It's good to be able to give God what is due to him. And that's all of our praises. But I won't belong the time. I do want you to remember after our services, Lady Patricia said with the announcement, there's a reception going on, and you would have received an invitation or you've seen the announcement. They're recognizing those families of Antioch East who were bereaved this year that right after here, you'll go out this door and go into the women's classroom. They've already set it up for celebration for you all. We want to thank God for that. I just want to plug in a little promotion regarding watch night service. I try not to come up and do a lot of announcements, but I want to really plug this in. This year, Antioch East Baptist Church is doing something different. We're doing something different. We're going to praise the Lord as we get prepared to go into the new year. But we're doing it different because we understand that times have changed and people don't feel comfortable on those roads at night. People don't feel comfortable anymore being out after dark. So we want to accommodate that because... In the word, watch night services set aside to welcome over into the new year. But Antioch East, we're doing watch day service. Right after our 1045 a.m. service on the 31st, we're going to have our regular service. We want everybody to come in and praise with us. But after the service, we're going to have food and fellowship. We're going to cross over into the dining hall. And we don't know how the weather is going to be that day. So if we have an overflow, we will accommodate that accordingly. But we want you to invite your family and friends out to watch day service. We invite our friends everywhere else. But when it comes to church, we just kind of ease away from that. But I'm telling you, everybody needs God. And as we go into the new year of 2024, God has laid it on my heart. In 2023, it was about revitalizing. It was about renewing and repositioning. But 2024 for Antioch East Baptist Church will be the year of fulfillment. So as we go into 2024, we're all going to come and have a watch day service. We're going to have a time, and I promise you, we're going to have a Holy Ghost good time. We're going to have praises. We're going to have worshiping. We're going to have testimonies. And we're going to want everyone to know, even our live streamings, we thank God for you. But that would not be streamed that day because when people give their testimonies, that's something sacred. And we don't want the whole world knowing about your business if you want to let people know what God has done for you. And you'll say, Pastor, I'm all right with that. But everybody is not all right with that. So we're going to respect that. But what are we going to do for those that are live streaming? That evening, or that night at 11.50 p.m., they can dial in on our prayer line, and I'm going to go in prayer with them, welcoming over into the new year. But brothers and sisters, please join us for Watch Day Service 2023. Amen? Amen. Young people, young people, young people, today is your day. Every day is your day because you are special to us all. 
But I have two verses that I would like to read to you today. Matthew, the first chapter, verse 19, if you all don't mind standing, we have it on the monitor for our young people to be able to see along with our congregation. And after we read Matthew, the first chapter, verse 19, we're going to go to James, the fourth chapter, verse 7. Young people, there's only two verses that we can take hold to. The first one says, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Then we have James, the fourth chapter, verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. I want to say that last part again. And he will flee from you. Who is he? It says it right there. Resist the devil. Yes. And he will flee from you. Amen? Amen? You all may be seated. Ushers, thank you for standing on your post. You may be seated. Give praises to God. Let us go in prayer as we give God the highest praise. Heavenly Father, God Almighty, the one that is, always will be. We thank you, Lord. Because we know that it is only you that will handle your business the way you want it handled. Lord, I'm just one of your instruments, so I say handle your business through me. And handle your business with your people. Bless our young people. Bless our future, but they're also our present. And we hold dear to our past. In the mighty name of Jesus, speak, Lord. Speak to me. Speak through me. I want your children to know God is trying to tell you something. In Jesus' name, amen. We take these two verses. We take Matthew, the first chapter, verse 19, and then we find ourselves in James, the fourth chapter, verse 7. Young people, I want you to know, it was 400 years there was silence. 400 years after the last book in the Old Testament. After Malachi, we don't hear another word for 400 years. No prophet, no nothing. But they're waiting for a gift that they have been praying for called the Messiah, which is Jesus, who is Jesus. When they've been praying, but I want you to know today I want to talk to you for a moment. Somebody, I just want you to know, somebody's trying to steal my joy. You know, we always say subtopics. You know what subtopics mean? That just mean an add-on. And the subtopic is it ain't happening. Right. Somebody's trying to steal my joy. It ain't happening. Right. Young people, I want you to know, I know in English, and my teacher would tell me it is not going to happen. But we also know that we can find the word ain't, which means also not. So I don't want to get you in trouble in school when you're writing your paper. Don't put down ain't. But you got to put down it will not. But right now, I want you to know we've been listening to you all sing today and all those that have visited. It's only been about joy. It's been about giving God the praises. Then we hear Sister Jackie Crusher comes up and say, when you speak my name, talking about speaking the name of Jesus. Well, I want to tell you, why did I choose those two verses for you? One is in Matthew, the first chapter. It's all about presentation. It's all about salutation. It's about the promise of God. You're going to find in Matthew, the first chapter, there's a lot of things that's going on, like in your life right now, young people. It's a lot of things going on. It's a lot of things that are drawing your attention. How many of you all are so easy to be distracted? You'll start wanting your mind off when your teachers are trying to teach you your lesson. You start looking at your friends, looking at what they got on. Are you looking at what they're doing they should not be doing? You start fumbling with your fingers or you start fumbling with your clothes or you start, I don't know about you, but I remember in school, we would have books and while the teacher is talking, the students, some of us are just going through our pages trying to get ahead of the teacher or we either close our book, we don't want to hear that. When I want you to know just like that sheet of paper just released itself for me. That's exactly what we do in school. We would tear out the pages, and then we won't make it usable for anyone else. But I want to talk to you today about 
Somebody trying to steal your joy. Ain't happening. I want you to know right here with Jesus, Mary's been told that she's getting ready to have a baby. We're not at Christmas yet, but we're in preparation of Christmas. There are many of you all have told your parents what you want for Christmas. But I'm going to tell you what's so beautiful about life today and also destructive. Every day is Christmas to you all. You get what you want when you want it. So when you really get a gift from Christmas, it ain't nothing but a thing. It's nothing but a same old, same old. You'll play it for a little while. You got something new. It doesn't entertain you like it once did. When we were children, it was Christmas. We would write down our little list what we want. Right after Christmas, on the same day, or probably the next day, when I want this next Christmas, we're already busy planning. How many of you all have gotten more than what you need? How many of your parents always give you something to keep you quiet? Or give you something because everybody else has something. They want you to have it. And then if you don't have it, you tell your mom or your dad or your grandparents, you're mean. I don't like you anymore. Have you ever said to yourself and your parents didn't hear you, I don't love you anymore? Are you ever used this word before? So I hope you haven't, but I know you have because I've been there. I hate you. Your mom said, what did you say? Nothing. <laughs> but you know you done talked about them. You done got upset with them. But there's something I want you to know. Mary has been given a gift. In chapter 1 of Matthew, after 400 years, a gift had been given. A gift has been given to all of those that have been waiting. I love our young people. When one has been called out, everybody get together trying to figure out what's going on. And I saw Sister Crutcher just now giving motion to one and everybody else is looking. Is she talking to me? Well, that's just how Mary was. When the angel came upon Mary, Mary said, are you talking to me? The angel said, Mary, you have found favor amongst all women. God has shown you favor because you have been chosen out of all the women in the universe. Out of all the women that will come after you are the ones that have come before you. You have been chosen. Mary consults with her husband. He noticed something. He's not her husband yet, Joseph. They said he had, she has been betrothed to him. That means that she has been promised to him. From the time that they were little children to the time they become adults, she had been promised to be his wife. But she got a surprise for him, a surprise he was not waiting for. She says that I am with child. That means that she has a baby in her womb. A womb is different from just the stomach. A womb is like a suitcase. Do you know how you put clothes in a suitcase and you seal it up? A womb is almost like a lunch bag. Do you know how you put your favorite things in your lunch bag when you go to school? Well, God put the favorite things, the really most beautiful gift he had in Mary's lunch bag. He wanted to make sure that she understood that you have been blessed like nobody else. It's almost like this is that you have the most delicious of all snacks that you could ever get, of all the meals you could ever receive, the most priceless jewel. It was Jesus. She's been told that, but she told Joseph. And this morning, we had Brother Tyson speak about the mind of Joseph, and he said, that baby is not my baby. I'm not paying child support for that baby. That's what he was saying, Joseph was saying. That's what we were saying today's time. I want a DNA test. A DNA test is to prove that this child belongs to you. But Joseph was such a good man. He did not put her away for anybody else to see. He was getting ready to kill her because it was unlawful for you to break the covenant that was promised. Almost like when your parents tell you, if you do this, then this is going to happen. But if you don't do what I've asked you, then this is going to happen. That's called consequences. Well, with Jesus, he's already 
their place in Mary's lunch bag. But Joseph found out that the lunch that's in the bag is not his lunch. So he has a problem with that. I didn't prepare that for her to have. So there's a problem right there. There's a problem with the food that's in the bag. But when he gets ready to do what he knows that the law requires for him to do, to put her to death, God steps in and tells him, don't you touch that lunch, nor that woman that's carrying the lunch, because I have allowed this to be. When God speaks, you will hear him, young people. We find that in that same chapter, Mary go and see her cousin Elizabeth. As soon as she walks up to Elizabeth, as soon as she walked up to Elizabeth, something happens with Elizabeth's lunch bag. See, Elizabeth's carrying a lunch, too. She has the forerunner, which is John the Baptist. All of a sudden, it's like Elizabeth's lunch just jumps out and get excited. And when they get excited, they begin to witness to one another. Elizabeth realized that I may be carrying a great lunch that's going to change the world, but you got the great lunch that's going to save the world. There's a big difference in the two women, but it never said Elizabeth was jealous of her. It said that her lunch bag was leaping for her. Let's go to James, the fourth chapter, the seventh verse. The book of James is about Building your faith, strengthening your faith, gaining wisdom. It's about the obedience of wisdom to God and faith in God, but it's also about how you treat other people. You do what God has for you to do. Well, I want you to know, you say, Pastor, how the hell to do with anybody trying to steal my joy? The word joy, look at it. It talks about it talks about contentment. And then we find out in the book of the Bible, joy is mentioned 430 times. Happy is only mentioned 10 times. When we find the word rejoicing, we find the word joy, we're talking about feeling happy. What makes you happy? What makes you happy? If I gave you some money right now, would that make you happy? If I take you out and get you the greatest kicks, and we're talking about, for those who don't understand, we're talking about shoes. If I take you out to get the greatest kicks, then you would tell me that's lit, and you'll be happy about that. But those kicks are going to make you happy for so long. If I go out and buy you the cell phone that just went out today, in a few seconds, you're going to see another cell phone going to be even better than that. You're not going to be too joyful too long. But what the devil was trying to do, the devil was trying to stop the joy. Do you know somebody's trying to steal your joy? They don't want you happy. I want to know, when was the last time you all laughed as children? Just laugh at young people. Everything is so serious now. When was the last time you learned to have fun and you learned just to enjoy life? We don't laugh anymore. We got all these young people in the church and they're not laughing. There was a time when we would see kids laughing and playing. When Christmas came, early in the morning, we couldn't wait to get outside. It was like 5.30, 6.00 in the morning. People were going down the street. Back in the day, we had some skates that was called the flyways. And we would take the key to the flyways and we would turn them on to tighten our skates. And we would be down on the street just gliding and skating. And everybody would be on their bicycles. I want to share a story with you about a bicycle that I had. I had so much joy, my dad had gotten me a bike. It was from John Deere back then. I was on the bike, my sister had a bike, and I was with my buddies, and I was down just pedaling away. All of a sudden, something happened. I saw a wheel going straight ahead, and I was still pedaling, and it was my wheel on my bike, and it had already went ahead of me, and all the kids were laughing. I went, all of a sudden, my joy was gone. But I found joy with my flyaways because back in the day, we were so creative. We would take boards and make 
what we call scooters, and we will put flyaways on the scooters, and we'll be going down the street, just making like go-karts, just going down. That brought us joy. But what happened with your skates, they call them hot bottles. That means that the skates back then, they done basically got a flat tire and basically don't work anymore. I want to tell you something, young people. The devil wants you to be a hot bottle because he doesn't want you to be happy. He doesn't want you to have joy, but God is our joy. Young people, I wanted to give you the joy about Jesus coming into this world that we can have everlasting life. I wanted to give you that, young people. May I have permission now to go and give our other people in the church a little something to carry for the day? Can I do that? Thank you very much. Somebody trying to steal my joy. It ain't happening. I want you to know that the time that we're living in now, joy is being taken away from us. If you notice with God's word as we have watched time, it used to be a time that Macy Christmas tree would be up every year and people were ecstatic about that, taking your Children to Macy's are riding on the pink pig. And those that of my age group, you knew what the pink pig was. It was where you would go through Macy's and it would ride around the trees and everything. All of a sudden, we find that we're not going to do that anymore. There was a time when we were seeing nativity scenes and we would be going by in the neighborhood. We don't see a lot of nativity scenes anymore. There was a time when we remember Christmas was not only about receiving gifts. It was about receiving the gift. Somewhere along the way, we don't treasure what God has given us. Somewhere along the way, we don't want to do all this Jesus stuff, but we want to do all the other stuff. But I'm going to tell you something right now. You won't be able to survive without Jesus. I want you to know that you got to have some joy in your life. A man or a woman can't bring you eternal joy. I want you to know a car or a house can't give you eternal joy. I want to let you know right now the church can't give you eternal joy. We're looking around for this joy that men and women are talking about. But if you want to know where the joy is, it is called in the book of Almighty. It's the Holy Bible. I want you to know you can laugh and be in God's house. God don't want his Christians always to be stiff-necked. God don't want his Christians always to be saying, woe me. But God want people to know that this joy that I have inside of me, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. This joy that I have give me strength to go from day to day. This joy that I have give me light even when there's darkness. This joy that I have will make me want to do right when I want to do wrong. This joy that I have, it will teach me how to rise up and it will teach me how to go down. This joy that I have is something that leaps inside of me. It won't let me be still. When I speak his name, something happens in the room. And it's not this room, but it's inside of this room. Something happens and my hands go up. I, I want you to know today that I'm just feeling good to know that God is on our side. I want you to know that how it works when you get joy. I want to talk to you a moment about a particular person named Moses. And I want to talk to you for a moment. And I just need some help right now. I'm going to ask. I know we got a visitor today. And I want him to come down with his cousin. I want Kobe and Akari to come down. I want Duntavius to come down. You know your name, so I don't have to point out to you. There's a reason for this right now. I just ask these young brothers to come down and help me right now. I need some help in this place right now. I want to let you know how joy works. Hey, brothers, I just need for you to line up side by side right now. We want to thank God, and I don't mind for you to face the congregation. Y'all some good-looking brothers. You don't mind facing the congregation. God is good all by himself. I want to thank him right now. And I want to show you how God works when he gives us joy. 
I want to let you know how joy works. It was Moses who was on the battlefield, and he was in remnant with the Israelites. And I want you to know it was the Amalekites that are come and try to start battle with them. And see, it was in this particular chapter of Exodus that we find that the people were complaining. They were complaining about the water. I need some water. How many of you all are thirsty right now? How many of you all are thirsty right now? You're talking about what kind of thirst? Some of you are men thirsty. Some of you are women thirsty. Some of you are money thirsty. Some of you are just want some thirst to have some thirst. But I want to tell you, when you're not in God, you'll never have your thirst quenched. But when you call on God, God will do what he's always done. He is a provider. He is a sustainer. He is an uplifter. He is one that carries your heavy load. He is one that is with you when you're taking your exams in school. He's the one that saw you through graduation. He's the one that saw you through all the other stuff that you were going through. That was God that was on your side. He is the one when you don't have any food in your house and you're smiling at everybody and think things is good. And you're saying, God, how are you going to provide for me? And then you see God do his great work. Some of us right now on our last dime, you've been praying to God to change your bank account. You have too many zeros not going in the right direction. But what you need for God to do is to put a number in front of those zeros. But if you want God to do it, you're going to have to speak his name and you'll watch God do what he got to do. Some of us are praying over our children right now. They're so disobedient. They don't want to listen to you. I'm not talking about these young babies. I'm talking about some of us that are grown children. We don't want to listen to God. We don't want to hear what God's trying to tell us. But we want to do everything and anything. And then we want to come back running to the Father, saying, God, help me. God, I need a way. God, show up and show out. Stop using God and let God use you for his greatness. I want to share this with you. This is how the battle went. And I want to share with you, young people, where our joy come in at. Duntavius, I ask you to come forward and stand right beside me on this side. You're right there, Duntavius. All right, uh, Kari, I'm glad to have you here, brother, all the way from New York. I want you to stand right here with me, brother. I know you felt proud of your mom when she sung, when you speak my name. But I want to show you what happened when you speak his name. And the thing is that they was on a battlefield. And one thing that Moses was doing, Moses said, what you want me to do with these people? These same old people that's never satisfied. Sometimes they have joy. They had joy when they crossed over the Red Sea. They had joy when you were bringing down manna. They had joy when you were bringing down quails. But then they say, I don't like that no more. But you don't know what you got until you don't have it anymore. And then they were just complaining. But I want you to know right now, this is how it worked. Moses was getting tired. His hands were going down. But I want you right now, right now, Duntavis, I want you to be my her. I want you to hold my hand up because it's getting weak right now. I want you to be able to hold me up, but you're not enough for me. I need for God to send another one. Even before I ask the car, he started grabbing my hand. I want you to know that's my errand. And then every time they didn't hold my arm, I lost the battle. But then when they had me back up, I won the battle. But that was in the Old Testament. I want to say, brother, you ain't working for me in the Old Testament. I need Jesus. And I want to say, I don't need you to hold my arm. I need you to wrap your arms around me. And I want to say, that's the joy I'm talking about. I'm talking about Jesus. And Jesus got me. When I go to the left, Jesus got me. When I'm going to the right, Jesus got me. When I'm going down, Jesus got me. You can't hold me, but God hold me. When I go up in the pulpit, Jesus got me. When I say hallelujah, Jesus got me. I want to say you're trying to steal my joy, but I want you to know it ain't happening because God got me. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tell me I'm his own. If God is for me, who is it against me? If you know Jesus is for you, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world won't take it away. I want to say even when I take my hand off Jesus, Jesus still got me. Even when I want to do what I want to do, Jesus got me. 
And if God got you, what can anybody else do with you? I want to say, do you need Jesus? Is Jesus your joy? I don't know about you. In the midnight hour when I'm crying out, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world didn't take it away. I want to say this joy that I have, it was Anita Baker. If you remember her talking about joy, Anita Baker talked about a love in her life. I want you to know I got a love in my life. His name is Jesus. Yes, I love Lady Patricia. But Lady Patricia can't love me like Jesus loved me. I thank you, Master. I thank you, God. It's your glory. What a mighty God we serve. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. He went to the cross, and that was a gift. He was hung. That was a gift. He was placed in the tomb. That was a gift. Something happened in the room. He was resurrected. And then he was ascended into the heavens. But before we get to any of that, he had to be born. I waited 400 years, that's what he probably said. And he came and put his arms around him. But I thank this brother right now. This brother of mine is called Jesus. I thank this father right now. This father that's called Jesus. I thank the Holy Spirit right now. Jesus, I want you to know that the devil wants to see you down. The devil wants to see you knocked out. He's already started counting against you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. What happened? God still got his hands around me. And the devil ain't did nothing but count. Because God counts for you every day. I give you life, and I give it to you abundantly. I want you to know today, I want you to know today that God wants to put his arms around you. I want you to know today is a joyful day. We need to give God the praises right now. We need to let God know that we're grateful. And if you're grateful to God right now, and God arms around you. Get up and give him praises. Get up and let it be known that you know the love of God. And let it be known that God has you. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what he's done for me. He's been mighty, 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 mighty good to me. I want you to know he breathes in me. He walks with me. He talks with me. He chills out with me. He just let me know he's the greatest gift. I am that I am. That's who got me. Glory to God. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son. And glory to the Holy Ghost. I want to say this. Right now, I know that Kobe got his hand around me. But I'm asking Kobe to release me just for a minute. That brother didn't want to let me go. I want Kobe, don't leave me. Don't leave me. Jesus never leaves. It's us that leaves. Jesus never leaves us. He's still there. It's me that's going to and fro. It's me that's bumping into everything. It is me that wants to do it my way. And then I start watching myself fumble. And then I'm going to fumble right back into his arms. Kobe, you don't mind going down there and stand with your two brothers. I know you got me now. I don't have to ever worry about that. Mess with me, I'm going to put Kobe on you. Mess with you, I'm going to put Kobe on you. But I want to say the greatest gift. God. The Holy Ghost hadn't come yet. His son. The devil want to steal your joy. He don't want you to believe in Jesus. He don't want you to believe in the Trinity. Because if you do that, then he's going to lose. The devil got joy when he know he's taken away your joy. The devil got joy when he got you confused. The devil got joy when he got you acting a certain way that's not like God. And the devil got joy when he see you up all night worrying and sweating bullets 
not knowing what's coming. Trust God. Give it to Jesus. But the beauty, I didn't realize how good I looked standing next to these guys. But I want to say something. If you trust God, a car, grab Kobe's hand. Kobe, grab Dantavia's hand. Dantavia's, grab Akari's hand. This is how it looks when the Trinity got us. Hey, I'm in a good place. It seems like I'm running around in circles. But God is moving. And God is telling me, don't go too far. And don't step back too much. Don't lean this way and that way too much. Because we got you. I want to say to you all, somebody's trying to steal your joy. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. See, the devil want to tell me there's always a way out from them. Go up under. But I want to say, when I go up under, I'm going under. I need to go back in. I need to stay safe. Right now, brothers and sisters, what are you going to do? It's Jesus. Brothers, I want to thank you all. You can release. But I want you all to stand up here with me. The doors of the church are open. This morning when you got up, you probably didn't have some joy, but now you got joy. When you leave out of here, you may be joyful, but the devil's going to be waiting. But remember the three that got you covered. As our deacons come up, the doors of the church are open for anybody. I want you to know, this is not my house. This is not your house. This is God's house. And I promise you, you're not alone. We all go through things in life. Life ain't pretty, but God makes it beautiful. So as the doors open, we want to say, is there anybody want to give your life to Jesus? Come on down. I got you. Come on down. I want to give you that. World can't take away your joy. See, that's joy, Jesus. your seats. I want to do a roll call just to make sure. Over here to my left, is there anybody want to give their life to Christ or rededicate themselves to Jesus? The time is now. You may be seated. Well, right here, before you be seated right here, I got to ask you, is there anybody right here that want to give their life to Jesus or rededicate themselves? The time is now. You may be seated. Right here. Or there's anybody. Is there anybody that want to give their life to Christ or rededicate yourself to Jesus? The time is now. You may be seated. Last call. As we sweep through the city, is there anybody in my corner over here want to give your life to Christ? Rededicate yourself. The time is now. You may be seated.
great to see these young men in the church, isn't it? Amen. Let us remember all of Antioch East Baptist Church members. If you're a member of Antioch East Baptist Church, immediately following this service, we're asking you to stay. We got a brief call meeting. It's going to be a very short meeting, I promise you. After we finish with this meeting, those that the invitation has been extended to for the angel tree ministry, those that are bereaved that lost family members this year, and I think they've already taken care of inviting you all, you will go through this door and go into the women's classroom. They're waiting for us as well. Usher boy number four. They will have Sister Brittany, right over there, Sister Brittany will be meeting with the parents of Usher Board number four, the children and the parents. She wants them to join her. And I want to say that our ushers are phenomenal, but our young people are doing it for Usher Board number four. <laughs> we want to thank God for our choir, our youth. You stand up and let's give you all an applause. God bless you. Next Sunday will be Christmas Eve. We will have our service. We'll have a joyful time. But I want to thank our Sunday school department, Mother Wonderful Wanda Miller, Deaconess Barbara Ann Sneed. We want to thank God for them and all of our Sunday school teachers and all of our students. If you are a teacher and also the superintendent and the assistant superintendent, Please stand at the Sunday School Department. All teachers, please stand. Last but not least, we ask all of our Sunday School students to please stand. All Sunday, if you attend Sunday School, please stand. Before you take your seats, I want you to look around. There's a lot of people waiting to come into our vineyard. We need to grab them for Sunday school. Amen. We thank God for them. You all may be seated. I think I got all the announcements. Am I correct? Now let us all stand. Exercise is good for the heart, the soul, and the mind. As we close out, I do have one request. If you love Jesus and Satan has tried to steal your joy, I want you to get your shout on just for a minute. I want all of you to get our shout on if Jesus, we know that he is our joy. But if Satan's been on your track, if things are not going right, if right now you're confused, let's just take one second like at a ball game. Let's get our praise on for Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your promise. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for your teaching. Thank you for your manifestation. Thank you for your elevation. Thank you for the transition. And thank you. Thank you for being God all by yourself. As Apostle Paul said, finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be a good comfort. Be a one mind and live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with us all. To God be the glory. Amen.
want to thank God for all of our individuals that's visiting with us. We want to wish you and much love to you all. We're asking all of our members to remain seated. All of our visitors, we wish you the blessings. And as everybody's remaining seated, I'm going to run right quick and say hello to the visitors and run back in.